Hey everybody and happy Video Monday! Tisha Mahar here with you. This week I want to discuss with you the most common deficiencies that I see in my plant-based clients, so the vegetarians and the vegans. Now, of course you have heard of B12 and iron as being really significant um, things that uh, vegans and vegetarians need to be aware of. And absolutely that is true. So I didn't include these in this list just because you guys knew those two. As soon as anybody says, what is the most common thing that becomes deficient in vegetarians and vegans, almost everyone is going to say B12 and iron. If you didn't know that, be aware of that. If you are transitioning to a plant-based diet or if you're following one, it is important that you routinely have your B12 and your iron levels checked. Especially if you are um, a woman, iron is going to be important. B12 is the only vitamin that you really have to supplement with for sure. Um, there's a few others here that I would suggest you might supplement with too, but definitely the B12 you want to supplement because you're just not going to be getting enough of it in the plant-based foods that you're eating. It is in spirulina, it is in nutritional yeast, but we're usually not consuming a lot of that of those two foods and often people aren't consuming them every day, for example. So be wary of B12 as well as your iron. But for this video, I want to mention a few others plus one bonus um, nutrient that I have a feeling you may not have considered and that I really want you to be aware of and be mindful of. So iron B12, we've covered that. The next thing I want to mention is omega-3. So of course there are brilliant sources of omega-3 in the plant-based diet. We see them in our flax seeds, in our chia seeds, we find omega-3 in walnuts, but the thing is the conversion of um, for, uh, the conversion of plant-based omega-3 to the constituents of EPA and DHEA is really inefficient. So even though we're consuming those foods that have the potential to convert into good sources of EPA and DHA, it's not a it's not a uh, an efficient conversion process. Hopefully that's making sense. So you still want to watch it, even if you're eating chia seeds, you know, in your smoothie every morning and adding flax oil to your salads. Still, it's hard for the body to make that conversion. So so you want to be wary of this. Um, a good idea for omega-3, and I've definitely done this from time to time, and I have to say that I notice a difference in like my movement, my flexibility, my recovery from my workouts. One thing is that taking an algae-based oil can be a really good way to get more of that good quality omega-3 and in a, in a way that's going to be easier for the a body to assimilate. If you're not a strict vegetarian or vegan or if you're open to adding a supplement that isn't, you can always do a good quality um, and well-sourced fish oil, krill oil, um, fermented cod liver oil. These are good options if you are open to that, if you want to do that. Um, the next thing I want to mention, the next important nutrient especially for vegans, plant-based eaters, is vitamin B12. So really in the plant-based kingdom, the only source of vitamin B or vitamin D is going to be our vegan fortified products. So our almond milk that says, you know, been fortified with vitamin D. That's going to be a source of vitamin D for you. But it's not really abundant in, in any vegetarian vegan foods at all. So if you're not eating any, you know, um, meat at all, any animal products, you definitely want to either make sure you're living somewhere where you're getting lots of vitamin D from the sun, that works. But if not, take a supplement. So me personally, when it's winter, um, I always take a vitamin D supplement to make sure that my stores are staying up. The next nutrient to 
be watching on your plant-based lifestyle is calcium. Mm -hmm. So calcium is in leafy green vegetables, it's in almonds, it's in sesame seeds. These are great sources. Another source is um, tofu, so soybeans, if you do include those in your diet. So these are great sources of calcium. Make sure you eat them abundantly on a regular basis. And again, just every once in a while, you might want to get your calcium levels checked just to make sure that you are meeting the, you know, meeting your needs in terms of that important mineral, especially for women. Women usually need more calcium and it's really important calcium for our hormone balance. So if you are having issues with your hormones, you may want to consider looking at your calcium levels. Now, so I've mentioned our omega-3. I've mentioned our vitamin D, I've mentioned our calcium. And so that leaves me to my bonus nutrient that I wanna mention. So also, of course, we have our iron and our B12 on, to on top of that. Oh wait, before I get to the bonus, uh, zinc was the other mineral I wanted to mention. So zinc is, I don't think I mentioned this yet. I may be repeating, but I don't think so. Zinc we see in um, quinoa, we see zinc in hemp seeds, cacao beans, a really awesome source of zinc. My favorite source is pumpkin seeds. Get quite a bit of zinc in those foods. Zinc is super important. It's super extra important um, for, again, hormones in men in terms of the prostate health and in women in terms of thyroid. So Zinc is important one as well to just be watching. If you don't eat any of those foods I just mentioned, over time you could start missing this mineral. Now the bonus. So with regards to our bones, I mentioned calcium and I mentioned vitamin D. I have not yet mentioned vitamin K. And the critical reason I want to mention this is because vitamin K, vitamin D, and calcium really work synergistically together. So if you're not getting enough of any of those, you could be having still those issues in terms of your absorption. So with regards to vitamin K, this is the thing, okay? So, okay, this is the thing. Vitamin K breaks down into two basic parts, K1 and K2. K1 is available in the plant-based diet. We find it in leafy greens and in plant oils, but K2 is really not showing up. And I always am watching this when I see clients who have lab work showing, you know, calcium low, vitamin D low, vitamin K, I don't think you can actually check in your blood work. I'm, I don't know actually for sure on that, but I never have seen this before. And I've had tons of blood work done. I have to look this up, but I don't think you can. So if you're having those show up low and you're taking supplements, you will likely want to, um, to look at your K. So K1 and K2. And the K2, again, it's, it's, it's in uh, a lot of dairy products and it's in egg yolks. It's not in plant-based foods, except for natto, which is a fermented soybean. So if you eat natto, then you might be doing just fine on that. But a lot of people these days are avoiding soy. So please, 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 please make sure that you are watching you know, your calcium and vitamin D picture, as well as making sure that you're getting that the vitamin K. Um, a good way to do this, if you are concerned, is to take a supplement again, and a really good one is by Genestra, and it has the calcium, vitamin D, and the K1, K2. So if you are taking a vitamin D supplement or a calcium supplement, or maybe you're taking those individually, Looking for calcium, vitamin D, and K together seems to be the big thing right now in terms of um, or, or the most up-to-date, I should say, in terms of research about <clears throat> our bones. So K is critical, okay? 
K helps our bodies keep the calcium inside the bone. And if you don't have enough of it, the calcium could just be staying in the blood vessels, which is not where we want it. So be um, aware of this, okay? This is the big, big thing I wanted to mention in this video. So we have iron, we have B12, we have zinc, all important. We have omega-3, so we want to watch our levels of all of those, and we have the K, vitamin D, and calcium to be aware of. So those are the main thing, guys. Um, it's important, you know, even if you're following a really fantastic diet and you're also not losing nutrients through things like alcohol and caffeine, even still, it's good at least, you know, once a year or so to just get some blood work done, just so that you can be sure. I mean, plant-based eating is an amazing, amazing, amazing way to live and eat and be, and I believe in it and all with all my heart and soul, but you just want to be safe. And this goes for everybody, not just plant-based eaters. It's good to just check these things out sometimes for peace of mind and for your own confidence that yes, you know, you, you've got things dialed nicely for yourself so that you can really ensure that you continue to feel your very best. So as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can always message me. Tishamahar.com is my website tishamahar.com. Also, you can find me through Facebook that way. And then um, posting below these videos works as well. I'll always um, try to respond to, to all of your comments and questions. I hope you all have a great week and don't forget about that vitamin K. It's important. Okay. Bye.